Hello. Hi, Michael. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> My, um, what's that thingy that you're on with the video? That's out. Oh, that's I, fine. We're doing a podcast anyway, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, on Friday, my monitor broke, and I had to bring a monitor home from the office. So No worries at all. How are things there? Everybody survived the uh, lunar eclipse? I know. I saw the moon yesterday, and it was spectacular. It was still daylight, but it was just white and big and low and... Um, I'm definitely feeling something, but yeah. I think yeah. we're okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we're going to see a big red moon tonight, supposedly, so hopefully uh, all things are well. I thought people were a little squirrely um, this week in the office yeah. coming in with these odd um, <laughs> manifestations, but uh, it's all good. Yes, no, I'm hoping it's all going to go in a good way for me this week. I had it in my diary. It was called Blood Moon or Blue Moon. Yes, Blood Moon. Yes. Yeah. So I'm just channeling all the positive aspects of that without trying to become a crazy woman. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Do you have any questions, any concerns, any thoughts before we start? So I've done a podcast before, and if I'm correct, we – so we stick to sort of these questions and we just chin wag and you just talk to me. Is that exactly. Right? Yep. Just a conversation, me and you hanging out, talking. Um, I say, because uh, I'm a big baseball fan, it's kind of like I'm pitching batting practice to you. I'm just lobbing them in there and you're hitting them over the fence. So I guess it would, yeah. be, I guess it would be cricket for you. <laughs> yeah. No, great. <laughs> I'm so um, I'm so honoured that you asked me to to do this with you. I'm, so thank you. I'm so excited. Um, you've got a great story. I mean, this is this is remarkable, and and you haven't even told the whole story to me, but it it just is is brilliant, yeah. and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and you know, the, our background obviously is as chiropractors. And we had this brilliant idea of doing a online summit, and we had truly no idea what we were doing. And we cold called all these folks, and from there, it's kind of taken on, um, like yourself, a second and and third business for us. And it's been it's been a heck of a ride. So it's really exciting, and our hope is to get your name out there so that we can have you on the summit and then people, you, you get so busy that you're, you're cursing us because um, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're so well known. But th- this is how this works and this is what we want to do and I thought you were perfect for it. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're and, so uh, welcome. I'm so excited. I'm so, I love what you guys do. I started to receive your emails and oh, that's right. One day, you know, I just randomly just emailed you, and that's what I do. I'm like, hey, I really love what you're doing, and then I think I shot you some of my stuff, and, yes. and that's how it all started, didn't it? Yes, that is how it all started, which is which is awesome, and and that's it's uh, very organic in nature, and and that's what we really like about it, uh, and yeah. it's really neat. Like most of the folks that we've spoken to. Um, that that we look up to and and have mentored us have been um, so gracious to share um, and and it really uh, what's the it really reinforces your thoughts of you know people doing other things to help humanity which is really yeah. cool. Well, I'm in. I'm in. So. All right, so yeah. I'm going to do the intro to start, yeah. um, and then we'll, you know, the the first question is tell us your story, tell us about your diagnosis of MS and, and how it led to paralysis, and, and we're just going to go through this um, nice, easy peasy, um, and, and no big deal. Great. Okay, you ready? I'm ready, spaghetti. Okay. <laughs> All right, we are. We've been recording. I'll edit after we're done. All good. All right. 
Hey everybody, welcome back to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. I'm your co-host, Dr. Mike Akinfora, and today we have a special treat. We have Miss Amanda Campbell uh, from Melbourne, Australia. Now, by the age of 35, Amanda had experienced more than most people do in a lifetime. In 2004, at the age of 24, she was diagnosed with MS, and in 2009, suffered a major attack that left her paralyzed. At that time, she was given only a 50% chance of ever walking again. Unprepared to accept this as her fate, within six weeks, she stunned her doctors by not only walking but running. This prompted her to swap a fast-paced career in fashion to go back to school and study and research how she achieved such a rapid recovery. She went back to school to study for a diploma in sports kinesiology, which is a practice akin to physical psychology, which endeavors to unravel the connection between our mind and our body utilizing and TCM techniques, which she'll talk about. As accredited sports kinesiologist working in her own practice, which a great name, Ben Like Bamboo, Amanda now spends her days helping a wide range of people recover their health and rebuild their lives. Core to everything Amanda does, it is improving the health and well-being of as many Australians as possible. As part of this, she's embarking on a new business venture called Nourish, and that's with two S's, to deliver delicious, feel-good, whole food meals to people who are keen to improve the quality of what they eat. Where Ben Like Bamboo aims to improve people's mental health, Nourish is squarely focused on giving people a convenient, delicious way to improve their physical health. Amanda strongly believes that by eating the right food and working on their emotional well-being, we can then give our bodies the right environment it needs to repair and thrive. This is what she believes gave her the best chance of recovery to living a happy, fulfilling life. Amanda, that is a mouthful. How are you today? That was a wonderful introduction. Thank you so much, Michael. So tell us your story. This is absolutely amazing. Tell us tell us your story. Tell us about your diagnosis of MS and how this led to paralysis. Thank you. Um, I'd love to tell you my story. Yeah, so as you said, in 2004, that's where it all started, and I was 24 years old. Uh, living life to its fullest in the fashion industry, just being 24, and I was diagnosed with MS. Um, and five years later, it led to quite a large attack that paralyzed the entire left-hand side of my body. So my face, my neck, my arm, my hand, my leg, my hips, and I couldn't walk, I couldn't feed myself, I couldn't wash myself. Um, they all became very difficult tasks, and I was faced with the prospect of never walking again. However, being in a wonderful um, hospital called Epworth at, in Richmond in Melbourne, I had a wonderful team of Eastern and Western doctors that both worked um, with me and with a lot of determination as well and just being very passionate about wanting to walk again, but I was working with a neurophysiotherapist, in fact, there's only 10 in the world apparently, I found out later, who was very passionate about getting his clients not just walking but running again. So it was the right place, the right time, lots of passion, great people, and I ran in six weeks, and that was great. And um, it was actually a very special applied kinesiologist, Dr. Michael Bay in Melbourne, that came and worked on me. I lived in rehab for about two months during this time. And every couple of days out of love, he would, you know, come in, work on me, tune the muscles up, trying to connect them back up to the brain, which I understand now. I didn't understand what he was doing before. I'm like, my arms are up and you're pushing my leg this way. <laughs> and what are you doing? But um, I was very lucky because I would then go – the next morning to physio and I was, you know, we had a session in the morning, in the afternoon and in the evening three times a day, five times a week. And they would say, oh, what did you do last night? You're 20% better. I was like, oh, I had some kinesiology. What's that? And so that's my other passion is really getting kinesiology out there into the mainstream as acupuncture is now. So um, and yeah, I ran. I ran in about six weeks, and those. Well, the first step to walking, I tell you what, was um, 
was one of the best days of my life. I bet. Mm. Um, amazing. So, as a sports kinesiologist, like, what have you learned about the body? T- tell people what a sports kinesiologist does. So the sports kinesiology is a fusion of sports science and kinesiology. And what it taught me was a few things. And the first thing was that the body is truly connected and we really need to understand the body as a whole rather than in isolation. So as a kinesiologist, you learn different levels of the body, which are structural, biochemical, emotional, and electromagnetic. So if you imagine the body as a tensegrity structure, if you change one aspect of the body in one of those ways, everything is affected. And here's a great example. You're feeling anxious or depressed one morning. What does that look like on all those levels? Well, structurally, your posture might change. You might slouch over. Biochemically, neurotransmitters might fire, altering your mood, making you feel pretty crap. (laughs) Also, your hormones will change. We all know that sometimes we feel emotions in the belly and digestion might be affected. Um, And So that's biochemical. Emotionally, um, we work with the same acupuncture system, so um, the five elements, Mm -hmm. and um, the different meridians are connected to... um, you know, emotions, so understanding that there's always an emotional link to a physical ailment. So emotionally, you might feel more anxious. And electromagnetically, that's the chi that runs through the meridians. So let's say the kidney, your kidney chi is deficient. Well, that might affect your will to actually want to get better. Sure. So how do you think that affected or assisted in your recovery? Greatly. And um, the first step was, and what I believe Dr. Michael Bay was doing, was he was firstly going on a structural level, physically connecting, trying to connect the muscles back up to the brain. Because as we know with MS, it's a lesion that expands and becomes inflamed and the pathway um, becomes blocked. Mm -hmm. And so whatever that functions may stop working. And so it's got to find a new pathway and the, the lesion reduces to scar tissue, and if you don't have lots and lots of lesions, you're probably more likely to find a new pathway and you recover. And so kinesiology assists um, connecting the muscles back up to the brain, but also just understanding that my emotions and how I was feeling on a deep subconscious level was affecting the way that my body was working and functioning. Oh, well, that's fascinating. Um, so how how does how do your emotions ha- affect your physical health? Like, so you yeah. just talked about that. How how does that work? So how you think and feel is a mirror image of what you see in your reality around you, and also what occurs biochemically inside of your body. Wait, could you say that again? That's really important. Yeah, that's like the key. So how you think and feel is a mirror image of what you see in your reality around you and also what occurs biochemically inside of your body. So and it's if you imagine an iceberg Mm -hmm. and, you know, you've got the water and the tip of the iceberg is above the water. The tip of the iceberg, the top of the iceberg runs 10% of your brain. And all 10% of all your processes and reactions stem from it's like you and I are talking to each other now. If that's in our awareness, um, I'm wearing a green jumper, you know. And then the subconscious part of the brain, which is the larger part of the iceberg under the water, runs 90% of all your processes and reactions. And what I've learned with kinesiology is that this is where our beliefs are formed. Under, under the iceberg, out of our awareness, which is key. Yep. And these beliefs are usually developed from quite a young age, from age zero to six, mm-hmm. and they run the rest of our lives. So that was the biggest gift that kinesiology taught me because once I went back to study and, you know, for a couple of years, learned anatomy and physiology, once I got to this emotional stuff, I was like, wow, I'm confident, you know, you know through my 20s, you know, I, 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 I've got a twin sister, actually, and, you know, she's got Crohn's disease, and she died twice when we were younger, and she recovered, and then I must have felt like I was missing out, so I decided I'd get sick. <laughs> but we're both well now, so that's the main thing, but that's interesting as well. She's got Crohn's disease, and, uh, and they're both autoimmune diseases. Mm. Um, yeah, and so just understanding that 
even though on the surface I felt confident and, and great, I did feel like there was something just wrong in the background. And, that, and they were limiting beliefs such as I'm not good enough, I'll never be successful, I'm not, I don't feel recognized or heard for whatever reason. And once you realize these subconscious beliefs, you can then, using kinesiology, bring them to the conscious part of the brain where you, now you can work it all out and deal with it and perhaps then let go of the limiting beliefs that don't serve you in your life anymore. But we react. So say you don't feel successful mm -hmm. and you're and something I'm going through at the moment with lots of interviews and going on stage yesterday, I emceed an event to a thousand people and you know, I'm saying saying a belief is I'm I'm I've got a fear of failure. Mm -hmm. So stepping out on stage is is terrifying because it almost we, we tend to sabotage our lives according to these beliefs so i'll avoid going out on stage just so i don't make that belief true does that make sense it makes a lot of sense absolutely but being aware of this makes you very powerful and it affects hmm. what occurs biochemically inside of the body so for example if i'm stressed out and i go into survival mode jumping out on stage we know stressful hormones our stress hormones will fire like cortisol and adrenaline this creates inflammation hmm and may lead to disease. But if we're constantly in survival mode every day, well, doesn't that just make logical sense that's eventually going to affect you physically in an enormous way? It has to, absolutely. Yes, and I didn't realize that's what I was doing throughout my whole 20, my whole life, really. Yep. And, you know, it's still, it's still there and it still happens now, but I'm aware and I know how to get my body back into safe mode, the opposite of survival mode. Mm -hmm. And then calm down the system, activate the parasympath parasympathetic nervous system, and then putting the body back into balance. Because you know what? It is all about giving your body the right environment it needs to repair and thrive. And that's eating the right food, having great digestion, great gut health. But it's not just that. It is also about how you think and feel consciously and subconsciously. Brilliant. Um, so you're seeing clients in your private practice for a few years now, correct? Yes. Um, so tell me. What's a common pattern that you see that leads to this emotional and physical decline in health? That's a really good question. I, my clinic's booked out till February next year, and I'm so grateful for that. I've many, I've seen hundreds of clients now, and I've I've um, been practicing for a few years now, and I have noticed a pattern. Yep. And yep. the very there's two main things. Being disconnected. So you've got your mind and you've got your body and you've got your spirit. And technically, you know, in human form, the mind and the body, it can't escape. It's here. But the spirit, and this is a very Chinese medicine talk, yep. the spirit can absolutely go, I'm out. I'm out of here. I didn't sign up for this. This is awful. And well, that's a misalignment in the mind, body and spirit. And you don't feel guided. You don't feel connected. It's not safe to f actually feel in your body anymore, you know, and we're taught, you know, to ignore these feelings when we don't feel good or we don't feel, you know, we feel unhappy. Um, and so when you realign and you, you do kinesiology and kinesiology is very much about identifying all these things we've just spoken about, but inevitably when you balance the body, it's almost like the soul feels safe to come back in and the mind, body and spirit are connected and you can feel again and you feel more guided and then you listen to your intuition um, and the body just goes back into balance. The second thing is we don't understand our value and neither did I until now that I'm in my 30s. We don't, you know, there's the middle element which is lung and large intestine in kinesiology. And, you know, when you're in balance in the metal element, you've got fantastic self-esteem, you're quite receptive, you won't feel the need to attach to things. But there's certain emotions that might block you in the metal element, and they are grief, guilt, longing, and not letting go. So if you take large intestine as an example, what's its job as an organ? And that's how we look at the body as kinesiologists. Structurally, its job is to let go of impurities that the body doesn't need anymore. But emotionally... You need to look at what's going on there as well. What, what beliefs are you are holding on to that don't serve you anymore? And then once you can let go of these limiting or negative beliefs, you can really recognize your value. That is fascinating. Could you, 
could you go a little deeper into that? Give me give me some examples. I know you talked about yourself, but give me some examples that you see in the clinic with that. Oh, it's it's just fascinating how if it's an emotional issue, if it's a structural issue, if someone comes in with digestion or a biochemical issue, um, it's just amazing how the pattern, it always stems down to understanding your value. And, and what's going to stop that uh, is what you truly believe about yourself. And, and the clients freak out. You know, they lie down and I challenge, I challenge things like I'm enough, I'm valued, I'm valuable, I'm important, I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm beautiful, I'm successful. It is safe to let go of control. And it is amazing how, you know, no matter if you're a big, strong man or a really successful, you know, career woman or sports athlete, it's always it's always challenged and it's it's so interesting that no matter what's going on in your life sometimes sometimes you can be doing really well and 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 you still don't feel successful mm-hmm. but once you recognize that and then you know that the muscle doesn't hold and then we work on why we go through all the levels and you know structurally biochemically emotionally electromagnetically get the client to understand when that might have started, maybe in their earlier years, maybe, you know, the brain's like a filing cabinet. So that, you know, maybe age 10, the parents divorced and you you feel abandoned for the first time. And if you haven't processed that information and let it go or just understood it and processed it really, then later on in your life that they become triggers. And if you feel abandoned again, it will absolutely unravel and unravel you rather than, you know, recognizing that emotion in the moment and saying, oh, yep, I've felt that before and letting it go. And we're not taught this, are we? Like who no. teaches us? Exactly. Shouldn't it be a curriculum at school? Yeah, it should absolutely be a class in school. Uh, that's that's brilliant. And I've, I've seen and read and researched a lot on that exact thing that you're talking about, that we, the body can store something from when we're 10 years old. You know, maybe you accidentally got lost from your mom when, when she was shopping. And then the same, the body and the brain interpret that a, a similar event that occurs later on in life because, it, as you said, it has not been resolved. Isn't that interesting? And it's all about rewiring the brain. And there's a huge motor program for that if you've got that fear. And what you need to do is create a new motor program that, no, that's okay. Yeah. Nothing's going yeah. wrong. The world isn't ending. I can, I can cope with this. Absolutely. All right. So mm. tell me what has been the most powerful remedy for you in overcoming the diagnosis of MS and has led to you being healthy for these seven years where the vast majority of people, once they get uh, an MS diagnosis, it's, it's, a, it's a slow, steady decline. So what, is, what, what would you say is your biggest, most powerful thing that you've done? Well, everything we just spoke about is really the emotional links to disease and understanding the mental and emotional. But the other really important part, which is 50% of the pie, if you like, is addressing the um, nutrition. And when I went back to research and, 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 to, and to study again, I, I discovered, I learned all about the mitochondria and their deficiency in autoimmune disease. And um, it became clear well, that the best source for brain and gut health was going to be by real food. Mm. And I learned a lot of this, actually, by Dr. Terry Walls, sure. who really, really inspired me, so much so that I flew over to meet her <laughs> <laughs> a couple of years ago, sat there, a speechless, even I don't have a problem talking clearly, but I was so starstruck just because she has changed my life so much just reading all of her research and, you know, Gary Pulmeter and so many other doctors, but there was something about Terry Walls that really inspired me and I, 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 I flew over and I met her and I sat in front of her and I got to say, hey, thanks for giving me my life back because a lot of your research just made sense. And so I just understood food, 
Um, and so I starting, started to eat the right food that was going to nourish my mitochondria, you know, green leafy vegetables, eating the color of the rainbow, good quality protein and good fat. And I not only repaired, but I thrived. Absolutely. Because, when, yeah, when I got home from hospital, I was so grateful to be walking again and I was mobile. But I just didn't feel 100% yet. I still had that 20% left over to go. And that's when I got stuck into research and studies and, and learned all about the mitochondria and nutrition and gut health and digestion. So, yeah, in answer to your question, addressing your nutrition and eating this way consistently is key, whilst also addressing your mind on a daily basis. So meditation, morning rituals, always bringing your body back into balance on all aspects, biochemically, making sure your digestion is great, um, being of service, mm -hmm. being a practitioner feeds my soul. Absolutely. And it's, I just, I love what I do. It does not feel like work. And giving back and just helping others. When I was, I see a lot of people that come to me at that beginning stage and they're frightened. And I know what that feels like. And I didn't have, I had, a, I had a lot of people that were there for me, but I just wanted that door open. It's like, okay, I'm willing to work really hard. I want to get better, but what do I do? And that's what Ben Like Bamboo is about. It's it's a hub with a team that can provide you with all the answers that you need because when you're not feeling well, mm -hmm. it's hard to focus and do all this work yourself. Absolutely. So is that 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 is that where the second business nourish started? Like it obviously it took it took hold when you when you decided to start studying it, but tell me how uh, nourish came about. Yeah, exactly. So I, when I came home, you know, I wasn't 100%, but I was walking and that was great. And I learned all about the mitochondria in the cells, understood what food I needed to eat, started to eat um, this food. And I learned it wasn't just about what to eliminate, like logical, make practical answers like, you know, too much sugar, um, Food allergies, avoiding um, foods that might create food allergies, we're all different, that might create inflammation and processed foods. It was very much about what, very much about what to up. So, you know, green leafy vegetables, colorful. So I, I, you know, was cooking and making lots of different recipes. And, you know, if the last couple of years I've helped other people in my clinic uh, improve the way that they eat. And, you know, when you're recovering from an illness that can be difficult with stress, fatigue and disability, to, to eat the right food, but it wasn't only um, people that were unwell. It was, I, I saw that you know there were also time poor professionals, corporates, new mums and dads, retirees, singles, couples, hospitals, rehabs. I could go on, sure. and sure. eating well improved my life so much. It just made logical sense to we should all be eating well to thrive and repair in our lives to be happier and successful at work and just happier people in general and to prevent illness. And I just knew that if there was a more convenient way of doing this, that we would all be doing it, right? Yeah. So I knew that I was, and that's how, that's literally how Nourish was born. So um, my uh, co-founder, Scott Julian, is um, quite experienced in the startup space, in the tech space, and he is the brains behind Nourish, if you like. So he's in charge of the logistical side of things because we do, um, we're going to expand Australia wide next year. So we've had to create a business model where we can expand. Sure. Sure. But the main thing behind Nourish is we're just on a mission to make eating better delicious and convenient because we all know that when you eat better, you feel better Absolutely. physically and mentally. Absolutely. Yeah. So you guys with Nourish, your your is it meal planning and are people explain how that works to me so it's ready-made meals cooked by our head chef david Sellix, who um is ex-head chef at nobu london very nice very nice so he i sat down with him and i said hey this is this is how i eat but also that's how it started so it started um, like that, and he just designed these amazing. Just every week, he creates five new dishes, so that we're always rotating and eating seasonally. But what Nourish is about is is more than that. Now it's become bigger than me. So we provide 
whatever you believe in, whether you're a vegetarian, pescatarian, hardcore paleo eater, we provide whatever suits you in an organic and locally sourced fashion. Awesome. Yeah. Because I don't want to tell people how to eat because the way I ate, the way I ate six years ago was a little bit different to the way I ate three years ago and I've had to fine tune it now and, you know, we're all different and our bodies continually change. But eating quality, you know, ethically sourced local and organic ingredients is really the common denominator, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, that That is a wonderful undertaking. Um, it is a, um, as you said, it, it's not just people that are, are not feeling well. It's people that are really busy that or, or don't really have a good grasp of what good nutrition is. So what a wonderful service you guys are providing. Thank you. You heard the, you. You heard the New Jersey come out. You guys, that you guys are providing. <laughs> <laughs> um so what do you what's in your future like where do you see yourself with work and helping others um in australia or even around the world what what's what do you where do you see yourself in five years great question so when you find yourself booked out in clinic as a sports kinesiologist you know it's very one-on-one -on -one. and i love that and i i love seeing my clients one-on-one -on -one. but there's only so many people you can help when it's just you. I work, um, one of the, my team members is Damien Brown. He's a kinesiologist, brain integration specialist, the nutritionist with Nourish as well, and he's a naturopath. So he helps my clients with the biochemical side of things and their gut health. But he and I um, would like to work together on a larger scale, scale helping more people. So perhaps um, as we launch Nourish over the country, Perhaps um, I'm also a motivational speaker and, you know, tell people about my story, motivate them, inspire them and educate them and perhaps utilising those skills to be able to help people on a, on a larger, larger scale. Um, and then, you know, the food will be launched as well at the same time. Somehow, somehow trying to marry up Ben Like Bamboo with Nourish, I guess. Sure. Because <laughs> it's all part of the pie, you know, why... I, I researched all about rapid recovery. You know, it was all about rapid recovery. Why do really sick people all of a sudden get better? And why do really well people all of a sudden get really sick? And you can eat all the right food, but you might have a toxic mind yes. and vice versa. Exactly. So you've got to do it all, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I don't know. That, yeah, we'll see that, what happens. That, that's brilliant. So tell um, tell people where they can find you, Amanda. Where where are you um, on the web? And where what what's the contact number? Contact information for people. Everything. Um, so there's two websites. Nourish is www.nourish with two s's dot com. And Ben Like Bamboo is www.bendlikebamboo.com. And all the contact details are on both websites. That's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, I so look forward to getting this out to people. The work you're doing is wonderful. It is vital. And we are helping uh, human beings thrive. So this is your co-host, Dr. Mike Akinfora. Thanks so much for being on the show today, Amanda. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for having me, Michael. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye now. Bye. And done. Brilliant. You were great. So much fun. That was that was like I said, easy peasy. You were you have you have you're really shy and demure. It was tough getting you out of your shell. <laughs> uh, that was great. These um, you're going to be one of the first. We're probably going to just do our initial introduction with the three of us on our podcast, and you're going to be second. So um, we're really excited. It'll it'll launch sometime in October. Um, so look for it on iTunes, uh, Beyond Your Wildest Genes. Oh, uh, cool. Beyond Your Wildest so how... It's a play on words. Yeah. Beyond Your Wildest Genes, G-E-N-E-S. I love it. Yeah. I love all this stuff. Like, it's hard to talk to everybody about your genes, and all, all, the rapid recovery research was all about, you know, you can change your genes. And because I don't have 20 years' experience of science, 
it's hard to talk about that, isn't it? It, it really that. is. It really is. And, and the interesting thing, you know, the name of our company is the Center for Epigenetic Expression, and we literally had have geneticists contacting us. We're like, no, 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 we, we don't need to talk about that part of it. We want to talk about the changing yeah. of the genes and on a global yeah. level. And, and that's what's really neat. And what we're seeing is like-minded people coming together and really teaching people. You know, it's funny that you said, um, and, I, and I'm paraphrasing it, but our mission is to educate, empower, and inspire our community to allow for the active unfoldment of human potential. And you said in, in you used the wording of it, which was really neat, um, yeah. it, just in a slightly different way. So it just the synchronicity um, oh. is really neat for me. Oh, that's really cool. That's yes. awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Would I be able to, um, when you launch the podcast, can I put it on my website? Oh, absolutely. 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 So, so exciting. So you'll just let me know yep. when, do you send me a link or something? Yeah, or how does that work? Absolutely. I'll send you a oh, link. Wow. It'll, it'll be on iTunes and you can, uh, I'll, I'll send you the edited link um, when we're when we're ready to roll. That's awesome. All right. It was great talking to you. Have a wonderful Monday and we'll, I'll be in touch with you. Have a wonderful rest of the evening. Thank Thanks. you. And if I come to New York again, I'll let you know. We'll have a cup of tea. Absolutely. Sounds great. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Michael. Ciao. Bye.